Shalom everyone and welcome to April 2022 for the Hooked on Hebrew class. Now, I'm going to record this over again because I forgot to hit record when I had my very first class. So I am going to redo the class and then I'll be sending it to everybody. So, um, duh, <laughs> my bad. Okay, so let's get started with, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so here we are all together and I'm re-recording and um, we're going to, I'm going to do it faster, but with the same enthusiasm. So uh, here's what we're going to be looking at in this six-week class. Um, I listed them here for you, the different sects of Judaism, some about their tradition and culture and about their scriptures and how different Hebrew is than our language. And we're going to be doing that in six weeks. Then I give a little um, talk about how I began my journey 13 years ago learning Hebrew. And it began with Billy Graham actually saying that he wished he had learned Hebrew. That was his only regret. And so that's when I said, oh my gosh, as an evangelist, I have to learn this language. And so they call this language by the rabbis, Lashon HaKodesh, meaning the tongue that's holy. So they call it the holy tongue. I love that. And then the Lord said to me, Rebecca, I just want you to be a spark. And he used that term four times in my day, one with my solar guy, one with my pool that needed a new heater, one with um, somebody else said, uh, you're, you're sparky. And then a truck drove by me with this on it that said Miss Sparky Electric and it had a lightning bolt with a woman and I and I laughed and I said, Oh my gosh, Lord, I get it. I'm supposed to be a spark. Now what does a spark do? It just ignites things and then it's fanned into flame by the wind. And the wind in Hebrew, the same word, ruach, is the spirit. So it made sense to me that I would be a spark and uh, he will fan it into flame in your life and in mine. So that's how we got Sparky's Torah time. And you can find that on YouTube and Facebook. And every week I teach from there. And it's called uh, A Year Through the Torah for Christians. And you can get it on Amazon for $38. Subscribe to my channel and get my teaching every week. It will augment your Hebrew because I do a lot of Hebrew teaching of words in the Torah. And that's what's unique about, I think, my Torah class. There's lots of Torah teaching online. But once you've taken the class, you'll enjoy seeing the Hebrew words and, and seeing how I break them down. So um, that's why. Uh, I believe God is moving in, in time and history to bring uh, the Gentile people and the uh, believing uh, believers in Jesus, the Jews, the Messianic Jews especially, but all people back into one. Because this is what he wanted in the beginning was one, one group under the banner of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So my goal is to bring what seems like two separate things together and show you how everything Jesus taught, said, and did was only an expan expansion of the Torah or the law. And, the, and we, he didn't get rid of it. He used that to, to raise us up, teach us what's right, wrong, good, bad. And then Jesus expounded on it so that now we follow Jesus because he teaches the Torah. All the principles that he taught are found in the law. So does that mean once you're at a certain age, you throw away everything your mom and dad taught you? No. So why would we throw away the Old Testament or the law? It's important. It really is just instructions. But see, we think, oh, law's gone and grace is here. Well, how about if we bring them both near and we use both? It's like two, two tracks on a railroad. That's what I say. We need them both to go forward. Okay, so I gave you the scripture here talking about turning the hearts of the children, those that came after, to the fathers, the Jews, and the Jews back to the Gentiles, because that's where they're going to hear about their risen Messiah. So that's my goal and my desire of my heart. And then I quote some things from different teachers about Hebrew, and then um, show you some scripture about how the days we're living in, it says that 10 men from every nation and every tongue 
shall take hold of the robe of a Jew. And that is the word kanaf or the edge or corner. It's the same word from the edge or corner of a prayer shawl. So they're going to take the garments of a Jew and say, let us go with you. And it's the word kanaf, like a wing. Because when they pray and they hold out their arms, the prayer shawl looks like wings. So then I talk about how Jesus was not a blue-eyed Lutheran and that how the Jewish people don't even realize, many of them, that Jesus was Jewish and totally was a kosher Jew. Um, and so if you go to Israel and you say Jesus to some of the people, they think it's a Catholic religion. <laughs> and you're like, no, 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 no. Jesus kept Torah. He kept the feasts. All his followers were Jewish. And so... Uh, it's fun. When you go to Israel, however, and you use the word Jesus, it's like nails on a chalkboard, and they actually sometimes spit on the ground when you say his name. So you have to learn to use words when you're speaking with Jewish people that are pleasing to their ears, like call him Yeshua or the Messiah. And don't say my Bible, say the scriptures. Uh, use words that are pleasing to their ears. And, and hopefully as we start preaching in our churches words that sound more like Jesus taught than Messianic Jews in these last days, friends and family who come to know Jesus, when they sit in our churches, it's good, they're going to be hearing things that are more familiar to their ears and say, oh, I do belong here. I have some Messianic friends that say, I don't know where to go, because when they say take communion, that sounds so Gentile. I, I feel like I'm betraying my faith. I said, well, how about if you reframe that and just say, I'm going to take the symbols of the Messiah's, what the Messiah did for me. See, if, if you framed it differently, it would sound different to those that sit in our churches. So hopefully in time, that'll all change. So in English, we may have one word, for example, for teach, and it means to impart knowledge, right? In Hebrew, there's six words for teach. And then what I give everybody are all these different words. I put everything Hebrew in blue to kind of cue you. So here's the blue Hebrew words for teach. There's three meanings. And then there's three more for the word teach. So that's why I say, look up your Hebrew verbs and see what word they're actually using in that context. And it'll give you a nuance of what that word means. That's why I love looking up my words. So then I talk about how God used everything natural and observable in our world to teach spiritual principles. So think about this. God uses things that we can see, taste, feel, touch, look out our window and relate to in order to teach us principles. That's why when Jesus taught, he used things like the fields, the, the harvest, uh, the weeds, uh, the rocks, the rivers, the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars, the family, the head, the foot, because everybody can relate to these things. And that's when I first started studying with Brad Scott. And he called this, every child can relate to a house, a family, and a piece of land. Didn't everybody draw this as children because that's the heart of a child is the family? So um, it makes sense that God would take things that we relate to in the seen world and then give us spiritual principles in the unseen world. And that's how the Hebrew language works. And then I showed you how, where to find Brad in this introduction to the Hebrew language which I first listened to when I started Hebrew. I like his humor. He's funny like I am. I like silliness. That's how I learned. So this is Brad Scott teaching introduction. You can find it on the um, YouTube channel. And listen to this introduction with him. Um, I think it's fun and it'll ring true. Um, then we talk about the difference between Western Greek type thinking and Hebrew. One is abstract. For example, um, if you were to say um, uh, believe uh, in Hebrew, that would be the word aman, which where we get the word amen. But that word faith or believe is the word for a nursing mother. 
because she's faithful. And it reminds me of that scripture where it says, can, can a mother forget her nursing child, nor will God forget you? In other words, he's faithful. So amen and ima is the same word. Amen, ima is mother. They share two of the three letters in that word. And I'm going to be talking about that more later. It's how the language works. So instead of just abstract things like grace, uh, trust, love, Hebrew will give you something physical that you can relate to. When you look it up, it'll give you what it is as a verb. And then everything comes from the action verb. Then it's given a name and it becomes a noun. That's how Adam named the animals. He watched what they were doing. Then he gave them a name. So that's why in our New Testament, James says, you know, yeah, you can say you're a Christian, but let me see it by your fruit. In other words, what are you doing? And then I'll see if you're really one of those things called Christians. So see, that's very Hebrew to teach that way. So they're all about function versus form. Um, if you... Western abstract thinking is linear. They're thinking like, oh, that's old and, and has been. We're progressive. We're moving forward and leaving that behind. Where Hebrew thinking is, oh, we cycle through that every year. Yeah, no, it's all there. It, it never leaves. The truth is the same. We just cycle through it year after year. It's cyclical learning versus linear. And that's the way Hebrews taught. Um, they look at the whole scripture old and new, and then through the Holy Spirit, discern its meaning. I love that. Instead of inductive, deductive, which is uh, one way to learn, but, but the scriptures, what they do is they take one thought and then they compare it to the whole scripture and see if it lines up. And then if it does, then yes, we believe that. That's why Jesus said, it is written. He'd refer back to the Torah, right? Because what? That's the school teacher that taught him as a young child. So that's why we have to connect the two. So um, they think about religion as rules and, and justice and just head knowledge of the Bible, where in Hebrew thinking, it's all about intimacy and relationships. And um, so the Bible actually begins with the word Bereshit, with the letter Bet, and that's a symbol of a house. Bet means house. So it all starts with a family in a house. And that's how our Bibles start. Because it's the character and love of God to build his house. Aren't we called the house of God? He's building his house. Sometimes known as the bride of Christ or the Messiah. So get used to saying things like Messiah, Yeshua, um, Scripture, Torah, Instead of law, that sounds so, ugh, to, to a lot of Christians' ears. Oh, no, we don't do the law anymore. How about if we honor the law and, and then honor how Jesus walked it out and live it out like he lived it? That's why we study Torah. Torah observant means take those principles and follow them like Jesus followed them. And that's up to you how you want to do that. The more you follow them, then the more obedient we are. Not to the mechanical religious things, but if the heart's doing it for the right reason, then so be it and do it. Because you can do all those mechanical things on the outside. I can wear prayer shawls and I can keep all the Sabbaths. But if my heart isn't transformed and I'm not in the kingdom of God, then what's the point? So anyway, I'll move on. And then I just show a little joke. And then I show you the two um, alphabets. These are the ancient symbols. And then I show you how Hebrew is read from right to left. And then at some point in time around 700 CE, which is common error, the Hebrews don't use AD or BC. They use uh, before common error. So it would be BCE or CE. So around 700, what we would call AD, is when the Masoretes put all these little dots and lines under the letters so we wouldn't know how to vocalize these words. They thought, oh my gosh, over time, nobody's going to know how these words are to sound if we don't show them some sort of vocalization with dots and dashes. And that's what the Masoretes, these groups of scholars, did. 
And that's why we can pronounce the words today. And then I show you a video online that you can watch um, on how the language began. And I'm just going to get it started so you can actually see how to find it on YouTube. And you just go to the Hebrew origin of the English alphabet with Jeff Benner, and you can watch this little video yourself. So uh, I always go, okay, this, this is a lot, right? But today we're only learning four letters and two vowels. And uh, that's all you have to think about today. Um, so each letter that you're going to be learning of the 22 letters, isn't it interesting that you're learning this in 2022, the 22 letters? Okay, each letter is called an oat, and I joke and say I like to have my oatmeal in the morning. So this is the first and the last letter. This is Aleph, and Tav is the last letter. And you put them together, and you get the word oat for the name of each letter. And you know what oat means in Hebrew? A sign or a signal. So think about that. Every single letter that is in a word is a sign and a signal for something meaningful. This is why the rabbis and Jesus said, not a jot or a tittle will depart from his word because everything has a meaning. So um, it's important to know those letters, right? And don't forget, Jesus said, I am the first and the last. So he is the sign through all history, right? He always was, always has been, always will be. And it means sign. He's the first and the last. And then I gave everybody a break, but we don't need that because we're not doing a live class. This is the prayer you say before you ever start writing your letters. And here it is in Hebrew. Baruch Hamei Lamed et Yadi Lesafer et Haotiot. See, there's the word oat. This is plural, otiots. The, the, the letters. Blessed is the one who taught my hand to scribe these letters. So there it is in Hebrew. Then I talk a little bit about how words, all languages, are either called dentals, palatals, labials, gutturals, or sibilants. And this is a linguistic term. Um, for where that letter is formed in your mouth. So in Hebrew, they group all letters together based on whether they're gutturals, dentals, labials, etc. Now that doesn't matter to you right now, but if you're going to progress in the language, you'll start seeing these things come up and you'll say, huh, what's a palatal? And it's these certain letters. So just FYI, so you'd recognize that. Now every Hebrew letter functions as four things. It has a name, a symbol, it has a number, and it actually has a meaning. So for example, the very first letter is called Aleph, and that's its name. Here's its symbol. It's actually letter number one. Like in Latin, you'll have a one, and then for a five, you'll have a V, and for a 10, you'll have an X, like Latin. Well, Hebrew is the same thing. So this would be number one. If you were looking at first verse of Genesis, it would, it would have Bereshit with this next to it. And so you'd say, oh, I'm in first chapter of Genesis. And then the word Aleph means ox or a thousand. So see, each letter has four things. Then I'm giving you some charts here with all their letters. We're going to be learning just the block print type letters on the top, but I'm also giving you this graph so you can see the ancient letters, because remember, an aleph means an ox, and then a bet means a house, and it has to do with a family or something like that. A gimel means a foot, and there's its ancient letter. It looks like a foot. You get the word camel. Um, Dalit is a door, and sometimes you'll see it like this, other times you'll see it in a delta in its ancient form. But uh, anyway, you'll have this as a handout, and then this is what we're going to be learning more like block prints, and these are the letters for this week, week one. I'm going to be showing you that on my iPad. Here's the first four letters. The second letter has two forms. And we're going to be going over that with my iPad, so I'm not going to do it here. What I give you are um, the actual letters, and then under it, 
words in our Bible that start with that Aleph. And here it is. The first word is emet, and that's truth. So I'm putting the Hebrew in blue so you'll know. We're not going to go through every one of these words because your brain just goes crazy. But I'm giving you this so you can have it to refer back to once you learn all your letters. My suggestion is once you learn like the Hebrew word for truth, emet, then in my New Testament, when I come across the word for truth, then I go, oh, I know that in Hebrew. And I write out to the side, emet. And then I write it with the Hebrew letters. And that's how I start learning my vocabulary and my letters. So I start incorporating my Hebrew into my regular Bible. And then it all starts coming together. So um, I just wanted to show you that. Here's the word, by the way, for faithful is the word amen, meaning yes, or I agree, or I'm faithful. I trust in that. So you always say amen, right? Yes, I believe that. So the word for faithful or belief is comes from the word aman right here. And it's the word to depend on. Here it is. And it's the word for mother, ima. And so if you were looking at this word, it would be, um, here's the word for mother, im, ima is a mother. So see? They share two of the same letters, the Aleph and the Mem, the Aleph and the Mem, the Aleph and the Mem. So faithful and mother are related. See that? That's how the language works. So I'm giving you this. You can see the number, what it is in Greek, and then what it is in English. So these pages you'll have for every single letter each week. Uh, here's the word for truth. Look at in the alphabet, the first, the last, and in the middle. It's the word for truth, emet, aleph, mem, tav. And what did Jesus say? I am the first and the last. He was there in the beginning with the Father, and he's going to be there in the end. And in the middle of history, he was also there in the middle on the cross. And what? This is the symbol for blood, mem. And he shed his blood on a tree. Now, there was a tree of life in the beginning. There's a tree of life in Revelation in the end. And there's a tree in the middle that Jesus redeemed us on. And it totally mirrors the whole Aleph Bet in these symbols. To me, Jesus came in the spirit of grace and truth. And look how you can pull that out. And you get the word truth. Wow. That's when I just walk around the kitchen like this. So here's the bet, the second letter, and it's two forms. We're going to go over that in a minute. And you can look at some of these words on your own. Um, remember, I said every word is a three-letter root. And if they share two of the three letters, they'll be related in some way. It works like a family, like here's your mom and your dad and your child. And now we have a family. So Hebrew language works the same way. You have two root letters and a third to make it a family, and then it's a word. So if they share two of those, they're related. Does that make sense? Just like our genes work. So here's the word for son, Ben, and it's the bet noon. And look, bet noon is in the word to build. Isn't that how you build a family through your son? Right? Okay, and look at the word for understanding. It has the bet and the noon, just like sun. How is that related? Well, the sun has the same genes as the father, and it understands what it's supposed to do, and it builds another generation. So see, all these words are related. The sun, build, build the home. Okay, and then um, you can see these other words, and it's the first letter. Uh, by it is a house. And I said that's the first letter in our Bible is a bet because it's all about God's house, God's kingdom. And what does he say in the book of Romans? Who's more important, the house or the builder of the house? Remember, I think that's in uh, Romans 4, maybe. Um, but anyway, 
he talks about building his house and we're all stones in his house, right? The temple. So this is why you start learning the language and the letters and you're, you're seeing all these different connections. And I, I always say, it's like drawing a picture, like when you're little and connect the dots and suddenly the picture goes like that. That's what this language does for me. And then I show you the gimel and all the words that start with the gimel and then um, show you how family words. Notice that all these four of these words have a G and an L in it, a gimel and a lamet, gimel, lamet, gimel, lamet, gimel, lamet. So they'll be related in nuance because they're family words. So what is reward, redeem, greatness, revealing, revelation? What does that have to do with? How are those related? Well, God redeemed us when he revealed himself to us, right? And then he rewards us by filling us with his spirit and giving us gifts. And he redeems us. So whenever they share two letters, look for ways that those words are related. You'll see it in Adam. He's a man related to Adama, the ground. Adam, Adama. Hear how the, their sound alikes? There, that's because Adam was taken out of the Adama, and that's how he got his name, Adam. See? Easy once you get all the letters learned. And then the Dalit means door, and here's its ancient symbol, because a door of a tent, many times it was either a flap that went up, or it was a delta door, and that's the ancient symbol. And Dalit means door. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, the word Adam shares two of the letters with blood, dam. See, dama, adam, it's dalit mem, dalit mem. Well, how is blood related to Adam? He was the first blood. Adam came from the adama, and dama means blood. And look, dama with a different letter, shares two of them, means to weep. And they call our tears the blood of the eye. It's a, it's a Hebrew idiom. So when they say Jesus was in the garden and he wept tears of blood, did he really? Or was it the blood of the eye, meaning he just went in and wept? Maybe it's both. I don't know. But anyway, it's, it's fun to think about it as you learn the language. Then I, I shared how uh, I gave an example of the word for the word. It's debar. And then you add a letter at the end and you get a plural. And then you add it to the front and you get the word for wilderness, mid debar. See, here's the word debar. And here's debar, but I put a mem on the front and I get mid bar and I get wilderness. Now, what does wilderness have to do with the word? Look, they share the same letters. And but Midbar is in the wilderness. Okay, so let's look at this. <clears throat> what happens when God redeemed them out of Egypt into the wilderness to speak to him his words? He gave them the Torah, which was his promises. And when he gave them his promises at Mount Sinai, that's called Israel's wedding day. That's when the Torah was given, the law. I hate calling it that. The Torah was given, and that's the same time the Holy Spirit was given, the exact same day. So these are words of love. And then the word became flesh. And then when he left, he gave us his spirit on the same day that God gave the Israelites his words of love as the groom. See, these are beautiful, beautiful pictures as you think about how the wilderness is related to the word for word because he is the living word. He, he, it's like Jesus came and stood in front of them and, and fulfilled everything that was in the word <clears throat> and fulfilled it perfectly. 
he was the only perfect one to ever live out Torah. No one can live out Torah perfectly. That's why we need the spirit. We need to be given God's eyes to see and the power to then walk out what God reveals to us. So it's important to see all this in his scripture. Then you're going to learn two vowels today called nikud. The vowels are called nikud. This is the plural. So uh, I'm going to be giving you four letters and two vowels today. And I'm going to then um, show you how this works. So to read Hebrew, you say the consonant first, and then whatever's under it, there's going to be either a line or dot, then you say it second. So if this is a B in Hebrew, and this is an A, I'd say ba, okay? Just like in English, except you're going to say ba here. So let's look at, this could be represent any letter in Hebrew. And if it's a small T under a letter, it's the sound of ah, as in father. If it's just one line, it's ah, as in bad. So that's ah, this is ah. Now look at the uh, vowel E. I always think, oh yeah, the dots are like eggs. That's how I remember it's an E. So two dots is a sound of A as in they. Three dots is E as in better. So if I was to put this under a B, I would pronounce this be. If I put these three dots under the letter bet, which is a B, I'd pronounce this be as in better. Okay, we're going to practice in a minute, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I ended it with this alphabet song. So the alphabet song can be found on YouTube, and I showed you how to um, find it, that it has a long version and a short version. When you go to YouTube, look for alphabet short version, <clears throat> alphabet song short, and it sounds like this. It's really fast. And that's too fast because you're just learning. So to slow it down, you go down here to settings and then you go to playback speed and you slow it down, oh, to half, of, half that speed. And now listen to it. So this is more like your speed as you're learning your letters. Your brain has to have time to recognize them and actually say them. So you can actually turn the sound down if that's annoying, but it's just getting your eyes to practice recognizing the letters and the order of the letters. Because when you start looking up your words in this, you have to know where to find them by knowing the order of your letters. So um, that's why we practice every day. When you get up and do your devotions, Go to your alphabet song and sing it through slowly once or twice. That way, when you come next week, you're going to already know some of the next letters. And so that's a way to do that. Then here is I went, oops, <clears throat> I'm going to get out of this now. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to go back in and share my um, iPad. And we're going to um, practice some of these letters together. And I'm going to show you on my iPad, um, how, so let's start our first letter together. So the first letter is Aleph, and here's how we remember how to write Aleph. It looks like a slide, and then you put the leg on the slide, and then you put a little man sitting on the slide. I'm gonna call him Al. And he goes all the way down, and that's our letter A. And I remember that because I think of Al going all the way down the slide. So whenever I see that letter and I write it, I think, oh, that's the A, Al going all the way down. And it's number one in Hebrew, and its meaning in Hebrew is an ox and it also means a thousand. Remember that uh, a day, one day is like a thousand in the um, 
Psalms. So it's the same word. Aleph is one and so is a thousand. That's that word. Okay, so that's Aleph. Then I'm going to share the second letter, which is Bet. So you're going to write Bet three times across your paper. And the way I remember Bet is it looks like kind of a house with a back porch and a boy in it. And so I think of a boy with a back porch. And I go, oh yeah, that's the B, that's the bet. And it's number two. And its meaning is actually, a bet is a house. So there you go. You now have bet and the boy with the back porch. Okay, that's bet. Now let's do the third for letter, which is a form of bet, but it's a vet. And uh, let me get rid of that. Okay, let me start it again with a different color. Okay, so let's do vet. It's the bet, but without the dot. So the, the boy has vanished. And that's how I remember that letter is the V, the V sound in English. And it's still let the number two, and it still means house. Okay. It's just pronounced as a V instead of a B. So if it has the boy with a back porch, it's the letter bet. Otherwise, if he's vanished, I know to pronounce it as a V. Okay. And a bet means house in Hebrew. Okay, now our third letter. Bet and bet is actually one letter. The next one is gimel. And you're going to write gimel three times across your paper. Sorry, G-I-M-E-L. And a gimel looks like a man walking with a little foot. And why does it look like that? Because gimel means foot. And so gimel is written like that. And I think of get up and go, go. And I think of a gap, okay? Get up and go with a gap is my G. Oh, that's gimel. And it's number three. And gimel means a foot. How about that? So a gimel is called a foot in Hebrew. That's the word for foot. And we get our word camel from that. Why? Because it has four legs and it sustains you. And um, another one of the meanings of the word gimel is to reward you. It's the word for reward. So how you walk out your faith is the word for reward. Isn't that amazing? So how's your walk doing? Are you being rewarded by our father? See, in the desert, the camels rewarded you by sustaining you, carrying you through the desert. And that's where you get the word camel, gimel, reward. Eat. Okay, so that's the gimel. And the last one is dalit. And so you're going to write dalit three times. And it looks like this. It looks like a half a door, but it has a dingle dangle. So I always think, oh, this looks like a door. Oh, that, that's terrible writing. Let me start over. This looks like a door. And I think of the dingle dangle. And I go, oh, yeah, that's the D. That's the Dalit. And it's uh, number four in Hebrew. And Dalit means door. So a door in Hebrew is called a Dalit. See, you're learning Hebrew words along with your letters. And so those are our 
letters for this week. So each day you write out your letters three times, each one, and what its number is, its symbol, and its meaning. And then I'm going to practice some of the vowels with you now with using those four letters. So let's see. Here's the A sound. Let's do that. Here's the vowel A and the vowel E. And there's two signs for the A. One is in, as in father, and that would be your ah sound. And then ah as in bat, and this would just be ah, plain ah. And then the symbols for the E are two like eggs, so I know that's like an E sound, as in they. And then the three of them are as in the short E or E, eh, as in bet or bed or better. Okay, so let's practice some of our letters with our vowels underneath. All right, let's do this one. What letter is that? Okay, it looks like a boy with a back porch. So that's my, oh, bet. Yeah. Okay, that's how I got it. All right, let's do this under that letter. And what sound is that up here? Ah. Uh, okay, so I pronounced this. If I was going to do homework and I showed you this and I said, write out phonetically how this would sound, you'd write it like this. Ba, because it's the B sound with the ah, uh, as in father. Okay. How about this one? Uh, let's erase that. How about this? How would you phonetically pronounce that? It would be the two dots up here. So it would be A under the B sound. So you pronounce this B. Or you could write, if you want, with a like a hard A. You just say B. And I know that you know how to phonetically sound it out. But this is the preference. So I know that you see it's an E. Okay, so let me get rid of that and practice some more. All right, let's practice. What's this letter? Now that's the get up and go with a gap. So that's a G sound. So that's my gimel. Oh, very good. All right, now what if I put under a Gimel, this. How would I phonetically pronounce that? Well, it's the EY as in they, so it would be gay if I was to pronounce it, right? All right, let's do another one. If I have Gimel here and I do that, just a plain line, that's the A as in bat. So I use a G. And I say, ga. If it was the other one, the A as in father, then I'd pronounce this ga as in father. Okay. So in your homework, I'm going to be giving you things like this. I'll be giving you, um, oh, like a D with um, this under it. And you'd say, oh, this is a Dalit. And, uh, oh, it has the ah as in father. So when I ask you how to pronounce it, you'd write that underneath. So is that clear? I'll do one more and then make sure you understand how to do your homework. I'll have letters like um, this. Uh, -da -da. Um, bum. Da -da -da. And then you have to write under it how to phonetically sound it out. So this would be, it's a silent letter. Aleph is silent until you give it a vowel point or a nikud. And so this is a as, in, a as in bat. So this would be pronounced just plain a. And if you want, you could just do that so you know that I know you know the sound. Okay, the second one is a boy with a back porch. Oh yeah, that's the bet. And it's got two eggs. Oh, that's the E. And let's see, it's only two of them. So it's E as in they. So I pronounce this B A. So it would be like this. Bay. Okay, how about this one? Uh, 
Oh, get up and go with the gap. That's a gimel. And it's got the ah uh, as in father. So it would be ga. So see, you're already reading Hebrew. So that's it for today. I'm done with my letters and I'm done sharing. And what I want to do is go back in now and give you, show you real quick, the second um, PowerPoint I'm going to be sending you. So I'll give you the recording along with its PowerPoint. So that's two separate things in the email. The third thing you'll get from me is um, the PowerPoint with all the forms and other stuff that I don't do in class. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So let me share. So this is what I'm also gonna be sending you, which is um, all your charts. Um, I give you uh, lookalike letters. So when you learn all of your letters, you'll have a little chart. Um, I show you the slides, your first letters that you're gonna be learning. Um, some of the fun memory tools for each letter, like Al goes all the way down, so we know it's the A sound in Aleph. A boy with a back porch is the bet with the B in English. So you see, it's it's all there, uh, what I taught in class. And then um, I give you the handouts with each letter and all the words that start with those letters. And you can start putting them in the back of your Bible each week if you if you choose i i like doing that and then that way that helped me learn my letters and it helped me learn my words at least most of the common words that you'll see in your bible like grace truth father son um, faith trust grace um, all those key words if you could learn a hundred maybe that would be your first goal a hundred words in hebrew in a hundred days i like that Okay, then uh, I give you the, the vowels each week, so you'll have those, and then I give you your homework, and you'll have to print these out, so these, uh, no, I, yes, you'll print them out, I'll send them to you in two different PDFs, so they'll just be pages, and um, I'll put them in a PDF page, so you'll get the PowerPoint from the class, the recording of me doing the class, you'll get the handout, and you'll get the homework, so you'll get really four things. So uh, it's better than printing it all out. I, I told the class, save these in a folder on your desktop, put hooked on Hebrew, then you open it up and you put another folder week one. And in that you put everything I send you. And then you do another folder week two in hooked on Hebrew folder. And so you just have it in a folder. You don't have to print things out, blah, blah, blah. If you want to share them with somebody, I said, take a screenshot of it and send it in an email. It saves you a lot of money on ink. So um, that's my suggestion. And then I end with um, some fun references of different books that I like, um, different uh, study tools. And I'll be giving you more of that in class six. And then um, where I love to study, I love to study TorahClass.com with Rabbi Baruch Korman. He's a Messianic Jew. He lives in Israel. And um, he has his PhD in the Septuagint, the New Testament, and he teaches in Hebrew. So for me, it's like, oh my gosh, I get it all in one place. That's why I love studying with Rabbi Baruch. He's got every single book in Old and New Testament you can go through and it's all free. Okay, and then these fun sites are my favorites. Um, we get our workbook from Hebrew for Christians that I use to teach every week. If you go to YouTube, hooked on I mean uh, Sparky's Torah time you can follow me each week just subscribe and the thing I love about teaching Torah differently than others online is that I incorporate a lot of the Hebrew words and then the reference them in the book that we use in hooked on Hebrew so that's what makes my Torah class different than other people's is because I'm trying to connect the two along with the language and I don't think there's anybody doing that like I'm doing it. So I'm not saying that to lift myself up. I'm just saying, once you've taken my Hebrew class, then you might want to listen. If you want to do Torah, listen with me, because then you can learn more of your Hebrew along with Torah. So that's where I'm coming from. So that's it for today. I'm going to stop sharing. And oh my gosh, I did three hours of teaching today. My first class, I forgot 
to hit record so I had to do it all over again but it's okay my husband's gone he's on a golf weekend he left this morning and the whole house is mine for three days so feel free to email me if you have questions at rjlevis at gmail.com and I'll be answering any questions you have look for all of my handouts later this evening or this afternoon I'm going to be working on the video I first have to um, edit it in movie then I have to upload it to YouTube then I have to send it to you so there's a lot to do before you get the homework so um be patient and shalom I'll see you next time on Hooked on Hebrew to be continued bye-bye